Let's get some practice naming ionic compounds. So I have a formula for an, ion, for an ionic compound right over here, but how would I say this? And if you get inspired, pause the video and try to work it out on your own. Well, we could see that it has some magnesium and it has some phosphorus, and the convention is, is the positive ion is written first. So if this follows the convention, the magnesium is going to be our cation. And when you look at magnesium in the periodic table right over here, it makes sense that it is going to be the cation because it is a group two element, an alkaline earth metal. And when those get ionized, they tend to lose two electrons. They tend to have, they have two electrons in their outermost shell, and so when they ionize, they tend to lose those. So magnesium, when it ionizes, tends to be, let me, when magnesium ionizes, it tends to be magnesium two plus. And so this is probably, each of these three magnesium ions are probably magnesium two pluses. So we could, if we want, just to see what is going on in this compound, we could write it like this. Which isn't what you would typically see, but this is just to see what the constituent ions of this compound actually are. Now, as I mentioned, the cation tends to be written first, so that's the magnesium, and the anion tends to be written second, and that is the phosphorus here if we follow the convention. So that's the phosphorus right over here. And does it make sense that phosphorus would be an anion? Well, phosphorus is out on the right-hand side of the periodic table right over here. In order for it to complete its outermost shell, it wants to gain one, two, three electrons. So when it ionizes, it makes sense that it gains those three electrons. So that phosphorus becomes phosphide, three minus. And so these two phosphoruses in this formula, we could write like this. So we have two phosphide anions. So we could just write it like this. Now the re whole reason why I wrote out the constituent ions like this is to make sure that it'll all end up being neutral. The magnesiums, the three magnesium ions, will have a collective six plus charge, and the two phosphides are going to have a collective six minus. And so when you add the six pluses and the six minus, they are all going to cancel out. So let me write this, you have six plus, and then you have six minus. Which once again, makes us feel good that we're understanding this ionic compound well. Because an ionic compound, they didn't write any net charge here. So this is going to be neutral. So the, ion, the, the cations and the anions are going to cancel out. But once again, what do we call this thing? Well, the convention is, is we just write the elemental name, or we say the elemental name for the cation. So this is going to be magnesium magnesium and then we say we say the ide version of the anion so if this is phosphorus we say phosphide so this is going to be magnesium phosphide and actually i don't have to capitalize it so let me write it all lowercase magnesium magnesium phosphide and you might be saying, hey, this doesn't have a lot of information in it. How do you, if someone just told me magnesium phosphide, how do I construct what I did, what we originally started with? Well, the answer is you would have to say, okay, magnesium is our cation. It's right over here, it's group two. It it's going to have a positive two charge when it ionizes. So you would look at that. And you'd say, okay, phosphide, well, that tends to have a three minus charge when it ionizes, which we saw over here. And then you'd say, okay, well, what ratio would I have to have between these two things in order for them to cancel out? Well, if for every three of these, of the magnesiums, I have two phosphides, well, then they're going to cancel out. And so that's how you could go from the name to the actual formula, which we will actually do in the next video.